Morning guys. I felt froggy this morning, so I made a little Easter display. So these are some of my house plants here. Clay picked me some flowers. I threw some leaves in that fell out of some of my plants when I was moving them around. So they may start. Who knows? It's a little messy, but we are in the midst of a remodel. So and uh, so here's some of my plants. This little buddy here came from my grandma Dunstan. And I went through the family. I kind of got that. That's a Brazilian philodendron, golden pothos, brumid, if I say it right, Pratton, nerve plant, pothos. And the back is a... I'm going to say button fern, English ivy, daffodils, lemon surprise, mother-in-law tongue, another cotton, arrowhead, uh, the other half of the button, button fern, they say you can't split them, but I did, another English ivy, and another cotton. Clay is helping me out today doing dishes because I'm still in the cast and uh, I was boiling some water so he's using that for the rinse water to get some air, some cool air here. You gotta clean behind that sink too, it looks like it's getting froggy. But uh, so he's doing the dishes this morning. What else did you do today? Did you feed the critters yet? I haven't done the birds yet. Wait for the rain to stop. It's supposed to stop by 10 o'clock, and it's already 10 o'clock. So he's doing that. So this is another one of my plant shelves that needs a lot of help. As you can see, I've got some clean up here today because I was moving plants around. This is my cordyline plant. I divided it. It looked hopeless, but I'm hoping it does something for me. Okay. Okay. I got room for the I got I thought I was gonna wash yet. I was gonna wait for them to drip dry maybe? No, some of them have been drip dry since yesterday. Since yesterday? Yeah they've been in that strainer unless you Were those the ones I washed out, yesterday? Took out of the cover. Oh maybe I'll have to look and see. Okay. Well anyway this is a pygmy date palm and a Norfolk and I'm going to go over here and check the dish situation out. So here's a few of my African violets and my Easter cactus. That was primrose. <laughs> I don't know. I never really did a primrose before, but they, they're like constant water. I, if you don't water them one day, the leaves just completely flop. They're really an outside plant. So here's some of my African violets. And I absolutely love the color of this. And I want to get more red plants. I just think they're beautiful. But this is a begonia. I just love it. It's a Rex begonia. So pretty. And if you saw our clock video, Clay got this clock up and running on normal time so I'm pretty excited about that so this is going I just put like a little magazine in the bottom of this because it was open but uh, I love this little clock so I'm hoping to get more clocks I would love a cuckoo clock and a grandfather clock but we'll see what happens as time goes on just got to keep my eyes open Clay how are those uh, uh, Brahmas laying as far as eggs how are they because remember, we were worried about them not laying right away. They're laying. I'm getting out of the, I think we have nine hens. Mm -hmm. We're getting six to eight eggs a day. So they're all laying pretty heavy now. And that's pretty good. Especially now that uh, we're having problems with the country, you know, we need the eggs. So, so what do you think about that? Uh, I didn't ask you this before. So what do you think about the Brahmas compared to the Austral Australorps? Uh, as far as what? Laying, or laying laying and all that as chickens in general. Which breed do you like better? The Brahmas are larger. They seem to be a little hardier. 
I love the Osterlarps. They're a great dual purpose meat and egg layer. They grow fast and they lay eggs well during the winter. So between the two, my preference as far as keeping them as egg layers would probably be the Osterlarps. Over the Brahmas? But the Brahmas, now that they're laying, have been... I really can't give you a, much of a comparison until I see how the Brahmas are doing later on in the summer. Because I was, we're pretty sold on the Osterlarps until we start. Because the Osterlarps during the summer lay really good during the summer too. We always felt like they were the best egg layers, but now that we have the Brahmas, because the you Brahmas, can eat them too. The Brahmas are calmer. When you go to collect eggs, you can uh, reach under them, and they don't doesn't seem to bother them. Which some of the Osterlarps are like that too. But I'd say out of all of them, right now my choice would be the Osterlarps. Okay. Because the Brahmas are a later later chicken for laying eggs in that. So I would say that once the Brahmas start laying, I'll be able to give you a better uh Diagnosis, I guess you'd have to say, of the two. Because right now, I like the Brahmas better. Right now, the Brahmas, if they as continue far as, like they've been, as far as being a big bird, I don't see that they eat as much as the Osterlarps. The Osterlarps were good eaters, but the Brahmas would rather eat a little bit and then look for bugs and stuff around the yard. That they say that they're not good foragers, but. They seem to be very good foragers from what I can see. And for people that may not know, the Brahma used to be the old time meat bird. Yeah, but they grow slow. That's another another minus or con against them. Is they, the Osterlarps grow fast and you could use them for fall butchering. Which the, the Brahmas are, they get big in the fall. but And you'll get a lot more meat off them. So that's a that's a pro for the Brahmas. And you don't have to worry about butchering them and finding there's eggs inside them. Because mine really didn't start laying until January. Well, yeah, they didn't lay for a long time. Because we were starting to think, gee. I was beginning to wonder if I wanted to go back to Osterlarps. Exactly. Because we talked about that. But thing. now that the Brahmas are laying, I mean, they're... They're keeping right up with They're the keeping sauce. up with the eggs. I had to boil... Um, three dozen eggs the other day so that we could have it for egg salad and we just like boiled eggs too so and I had to boil some more so I can just pickle them because I like pickled eggs too so and I'm bringing in six to eight eggs a day plus the turkey eggs plus the guinea hen eggs that are they're laying the turkeys are laying good right now and this is just first of April and they don't normally start laying till mid-April so the turkey's been doing real good, good too. So are the guineas. Guineas don't usually start laying until yeah. Our guineas were laying too. Guineas will start laying until the first of Mar or first of May, and they're already laying in April. So we're getting those eggs too. So I'd say the, I'm happy with the Brahmas. I really am, because they're large. The eggs are large. They're calm. You can walk up to the Brahmas and they don't even seem to worry about you standing next to them. Where the Osterlarps are, they were calm too, but they're a little more skittish around when you were feeding them. They'd stay a little away from your feet and that. So it's plus and minuses on both behalves. But I've still, out of uh, all the chicken breeds, Rhode Island Reds and Production Reds. Production Reds are really good if you want eggs. But they're not as calm on the nest is some of these other heritage breeds. So I would just soon stick with the with the breeds that I like. Brahma and Black Osterlarp. Whatever Rhode Island Red are feisty. The roosters like to attack you. So if you've got Rhode Island Reds, the hens are spooky when it comes to trying to get eggs out from under them, they fly off and hit you in the face with their wings and they squawk because they got chased off the nest. I would do away with the Rhode Island Reds. 
White Leghorn, same way. They just the roosters are calm, but the the hens are flighty. And that's what I'd call it flighty. When you go to collect eggs, they fly off the nest. Uh, as far you want a chicken that you can reach under them and be able to take their eggs. Buff Orpington is another good layer of eggs. Good mothers. Brahmas and Ocelorps are good mothers. They're good setters. The Buff Orpingtons, you can reach underneath them, take the eggs without them being flighty. So there's the third breed that I would go with if you want a nice calm chicken for the yard. But I would put them in a fence with a top over it so you can keep ho owls and hawks and fox and weasels and raccoons and all that out of there because not being a flighty bird they're susceptible to the predators so I would kind of watch the predator stuff but if you've got a top on your fence you should never have to worry about any of that and if you can don't use chicken wire because a fox and a raccoon and all that can rip through chicken wire Use something stronger like chain link or some good heavy duty cage fence wire. Guess what? That's oh. my advice for chickens. Guess what? What? Charlene just went in her box. Want me to go show her quick? Yeah, you can. She's getting awful fat. She's ready to have them kittens anytime. Here's Charlene. She's in her pond. Gotta move this back. She is a little fat cat. Hey, dear. What do you think? She's looking up at me like, don't bother me. She's going to have her kittens any day. Clay's been feeding her an egg a day. To give her extra, Besides her cat food. To give her the extra protein that she needs. But yeah, she has cat food, too. But she likes the white, and the dog likes the yolk. <laughs> What do you think, Charlene? I don't think you see how fat she is, but she's a little fatty. So, yep, that's Charlene. There is Branch. Branch, you didn't eat that whole egg Dad gave you. I'm gonna have to sweep it up if you don't eat it soon. What do you think, boy? What are you doing? I saw you sleeping with Dad last night. Yeah, he jumped up <laughs> on me and had to sleep. We, we fell asleep in the living room. I've got my hand propped up on some pillows in there, and he uh, he looked over and he jumped on Clay. He loves Clay anyway. He's still so working. I'm on, the alpha. He's the alpha. He doesn't dare be anything less than that. Omega. And I'm the mama. Here, Branch. He's not coming over. He had a... a he, I washed these little things out because I use them for nuts and bolts and screws. Okay, you'd like the, the old mayonnaise jar and stuff like no, that? The plastic ones. I don't want the glass. Okay. You're going to eat the rest of that egg? If you don't eat it quick, I'm going to have to clean it up. He'll eat it. It's probably full from outside. You got all that food in that dish. In well, yeah, there was, it was an egg in there and some hash. So he had that, so he enjoyed that. <laughs> so he's usually a peg. He's half dog, half peg. <laughs> Here, Branch! Aren't you going to finish the egg? If not, I'm going to have to sweep it up. Oh, I guess I will start some of my chores here did some filming this morning wanted to include you in on what's going on over here got a lot of cleaning a lot of deep cleaning here is this almost done with dishes i can go out and do the chores okay and then uh if it stopped raining i don't know if it did anything the window yet and i'll dry these in a little bit yeah I'll let them drip for a little bit or... yeah. so he made like the egg salad he made egg salad for us in here and I had had him open up some of that uh, cauliflower. I'm like, I don't know if we should be doing all this canning next year. And then I remembered 
the pickled cauliflower. Boy, that stuff is delicious. I uh, like the hot pickled cauliflower myself. And I actually was thinking about taking out the grape juice, too, because we can do some uh, jelly. Can't rinse that in there. I yeah, use, I know. I usually use the big green bowl for my rinse. That's fine. So I got to wash around the sink. It looks yucky. Kind of hard to do a lot of stuff. I think that's it. Anything else, was there? No, no. That's good. Okay, guys. Do my rinse and rinse the two dishes off and get those put away. Well, you know what? I told everybody you were going to do a um, video on the quail. I don't know if you can do it today or not in the rain. Maybe you can put a video up later about the quail. What do you want to know about the quail? Well, just a video to see their growth. Well, they haven't grown any since week seven. But... Well, you were going to separate the males and the females and oh, all that? Did that, yeah. Okay, so just kind of showing that. So maybe we can get him to do a video later today. He usually, Clay usually does sometimes, just chores sometimes or something. You know how it is. Project, start in on something, don't have your camera. So. I gotta go wash this yet. Yeah, just rinse that out. And then I might use it again to put some uh, water in. Yeah, this is like that pan that Clay calls it Mama's pan. It came from my mom. It just. I've got one that come from. Your grandmother, your mother, my too. My mother. But this one here, it's like, it's all messed up, but it works great to boil down things and do stuff. It's like that good old faithful pan that you hate to get rid of. <laughs> hate to get rid of. You got nicer pans, but it's like, this one always works good. <laughs> but eventually, it will go in the stockpile, I guess, with the rest of the pans. <laughs> okay, guys. Remember, big or small. You, too, can be a backyard farm.